Tonight is set to be the first light session for my new ultra-fast telescope, the Celestron Rasa 8. During this session, I'd like to reshoot the Pelican Nebula using my brand new filter too, the IDAS NBZ UHC, a dual narrowband filter designed specifically for ultra-fast telescopes just like this one. If you've been keeping up with all my videos, you'll probably know that just recently I actually shot this target and that's why this is a reshoot. But that first time around, I wasn't really happy with the result, if I'm being totally honest with you. I'm hoping that with this new filter and scope, but the same camera as last time, the Player One Uranus C, I'm going to have a much different result and outcome to this entire session. We'll soon see what a difference these changes are going to make. Well here we are inside the observatory itself and it still feels extremely strange to kind of not have to do anything else at this point. All I have to do is just wait for it to get dark and roll the roof back. It's completely alien after so many years of taking everything in and out every single session, like most people do. Um, I just got used to that kind of thing being the norm. So now I don't have to do it. It's just so alien feeling to me. But um, I think it's going to change the game, if I'm being quite honest with you, because now I'm going to be willing to take tiny little opportunities at Clear Sky, you know, an hour here or there, and just add up data over time on targets, and probably end up with bigger integrations than ever before when uh, when the dark skies come back, at least. Uh, summer's not really conducive to that kind of thing, but I think on the note of kind of changing the game, anyway, uh, this thing in particular behind me right here, this Rasa, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think that really is going to change the game. I've uh, I've had a, an opportunity to kind of take a first few kind of test images just as I was setting up the tilt on my camera sensor. Uh, these things are extremely sensitive to tilt and indeed I had just a little bit. So uh, I kind of set that and now I'm left with, according to uh, ASTAP, it's got a tilt inspector. I've got 3% tilt left over, which it calls none. And I'm inclined to agree. It looks flat across the entire plane. Um, but yeah, I really do think this thing is going to change the game. It's just so blisteringly fast that even between kind of like patches of cloud, I was able to shoot targets I'd never shot before. So such as the Eagle Nebula, I got a <laughs> very short session on that. And, you know, incidentally, even with the short session, it was my best ever image of the Eagle Nebula. And another reason that's possible is thanks to this pier, of course, I've now finished building that and it's huge. It can look outside of these observatory walls quite easy. But yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just feeling really good, really thankful as well. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm so pleased and proud to own this thing. And I think that's only elevated by the fact that I bought it from such a good friend. Um, honestly, what can I say other than just thank you to each and every one of you guys out there for making this kind of thing a possibility for me. Uh, I'll never be able to stop being grateful for that. Anyway, I'm going to head off into the warm room now and just chill out for a little while while I wait for it to get dark. And uh, who should be waiting for me in here? But my good observatory buddy, who, by the way, also has a bed. Hello, Henry. What's going on? <laughs> Look at this sleepy boy. He's got a bed all of his own in there with some toys. And does he use it? No, he prefers to be right here. <laughs> Well, as you can probably tell, that night didn't get off to a great start with all those clouds, and unfortunately for me, it never did clear up, so I had to abandon session on that one and wait for the next clear night, which luckily came just the very next evening. Well, when I said I was going to have to wait for it to get dark, I didn't really realise I'd be waiting an entire day. <laughs> Well, 
Well, as you can probably see, guys, we're up and running now. The session is underway. We're currently on 20 to 12 at night, and it's just gotten dark uh, in the last kind of 10 minutes or so. Dark enough to start imaging. So uh, I have done. I've gone ahead and made a start. I uh, kind of set things up just off, uh, off camera because I'm not that familiar with Nina, so who wants to see me uh, struggling my way through and just bumbling along? Um, but anyway, I did get through it. I'm all set up. Uh, I chose custom framing, of course, for the Pelican Nebula there. You can probably see that's what my image center is set to. So uh, not kind of smack on the Pelican, just off to one side. And if I go to the imaging tab again, you can probably see it's nicely placed exactly where I asked it. So uh, that's going to look quite good. I, I noticed like this dust uh, off to one side that separates the Pelican Nebula and the North American Nebula from one another um, almost looks like I don't know if you've ever seen kind of rain falling out of a cloud in the distance um, that sort of sheets effect I know it's just dust but that's kind of what it reminded me of and I liked the look of having that in the field of view I think it adds something to it so um, I went ahead and chose that but anyway I'm using two minute exposures tonight and uh, the signal is pretty much blowing my socks off I have to say these look more like 10 minute subs through uh, something like my Esprit maybe um, it's nuts it's it's just so fast is this telescope it's hard to kind of put it into words uh, but I guess once you get used to your own equipment you know what it kind of does with a given sub exposure length and such and then you change equipment to something a little bit outside of the norm like this and all of a sudden it's mind-blowing uh, I'm having a bunch of fun um, of course it's not quite as fun watching the Nina screen as it is watching sharp gap let's say and uh, kind of building up a livestock like I've been doing in the past but I think probably the end result is better this way um, while we're here let's take a quick look at the aberration inspector so as you can see this kind of looks at each um, corner of the image each side and the center and I have to say the stars look pinpoint uh, all the way across the image field it's not a terribly large sensor but this does verify the fact that I got my uh, tilt adjustments right I would say um, that was one of the first things I did I didn't have the chance to actually image right away because it was just too cloudy to do much of anything but what I did get the chance to do if I just find this screenshot for you is uh, get my tilt down on the sensor to uh, 3% total which ASTAP reports as none and I incline, I'm inclined to agree really because it looks great on that uh, aberration inspector so this is probably what most of my sessions going to look like at this point um, so I'm just going to happily collect a bunch of frames like this and I cannot wait to see what these things look like when they're stacked up um, I'm expecting I don't want to kind of count my chickens before they hatch but I am probably expecting a personal best image of the pelican from just with this little session tonight which is amazing to even comprehend but i'll catch up with you guys uh, soon well we've just reached about half past two in the morning so this is really the end of this session now all that's left to do is just take a few flats and pretty much roll the roof back that's just about it and um, I thought it was time I gave you a little bit of an update before I wrap things up completely I just let you know how things have gone um, it's been a surprise for me it really has because um, going into this I thought that I thought it was gonna be a pain in the backside to be honest uh, but it hasn't been at all I'm really pleased to say the scope has held focus like a complete trooper all night long um, in fact it's done one autofocus and I triggered it it wasn't the scope or anything like that or Nina uh, it was still in focus I just thought to myself there's you know there's no way it's still in focus still after all this time f2 come on but it was um, it's just been full of surprises basically um, before I go on too long uh, I also did I couldn't help myself I took a look at the data so I took 50 two minute frames, popped them into Astro Pixel Processor, uh, stacked those, did a light pollution removal and that was it basically. Uh, so this image as you see is just STF, 
and that's it and I mean look at it <laughs> it can't be just me but this thing is basically completely noise free which is not what you know what you expect after a hundred minutes when the sky isn't even dark bear in mind at this time of year for me uh, it's there's no astronomical darkness this is just astronomical twilight all night long so there's a lot more background sky glow than the otherwise usually would be uh, and also it's sharp you know it's just not what I expected from an F2 system I thought there'd be major drawbacks with star sizes and stuff uh, I was pretty much prepared to accept those kind of drawbacks you know uh, lots of focusing and big ugly stars but I have to accept neither because it's seemingly immune you know it's good and sharp uh, take a look at these three stars here right next to the actual main nebula itself and you could park a bus in that gap the split so hugely it's you know it's, it's, it's some of the best resolution I've seen and this is coming from a 400 millimeter focal length scope paired with effectively a planetary imaging camera it's nuts you know I it's, it's blown my socks clean off my feet and I think this is easily gonna be my best pelican image yet I, I don't have any qualms in putting that out there so um, I just can't wait now really for it to start getting darker for a start uh, but slightly longer sessions too I mean these little sessions they're great and all but they're a bit of a killer you know I want to put in 10 hours or something on a target and see what it does then because uh, that's going to be absolutely just mind-blowingly good um, we'll see we'll see anyway so um, yeah it's gone well well anyway with all that said now it's uh, about time I went and took some flats and just left it there so um, I won't keep you too long I'll just like to say as always thank you so much for watching um, I really appreciate each and every one of you and I say it every video but I mean it every video that is the way it is and I hope it comes across well for all of you guys at home so I will leave it there I'm not gonna go on and on so yeah thanks very much indeed for watching to each and every one of you guys out there and uh, until next time just look after yourselves and uh, clear skies